Greetings! Welcome to the devlog for update 75 of Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades. We're going to start off as always with a quick sound check. Make sure speakers aren't up too high. <laughs> Wonderful. So what have we got for you this week? Well, we have got a, uh, a few new toys and some upgrades, some much needed upgrades and tuning and tweaking to both Meat Fortress and some underlying sort of SOSIG agent systems uh, that will affect other modes as well. But let's start off with the uh, with the toy before anything else, or rather, this this comes in a pair, and this is uh, this was an example of something that someone had, has requested a number of times, and every now and again, I just get inspired to just jump and fulfill a request that has been sort of long time asked for, uh, but that I'm just in the mood to put in, and. So that, that ends up being a lever action that fires 4570. Actually, a pair of them because of the way that the artist who made these uh, implemented them. The first one is the Big Boar Rio Salvaged. Um, you can see it's a sort of, it's a shorty and we can load it in here through this loading gate. This one is fairly short, so it only takes five shots. Take some shots. Boom. Not bad. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. Let's see here. Let's practice my. Remember now that we've got the those lever action control tweaks from uh, from last week. It is a bit easier to fire this rapidly. Obviously not super accurately, because this is the unstocked version. If you want a little more control, though, we've got a modern one, which fulfills another long-time request, which is folks asking for a lever action that can be tacked to cooled up. Where here you have a little ridiculous with this, like, brass knuckle-style lever, but, you know, sometimes you take the goofy with, uh, with the awesome. And in this case, we've got this with a corded suppressor up here, a, uh, an elevated MRO and a laser sight, allowing us to quite easily... Let's see, did I load this yet? Nope, I did not. Lol. Let's load her up. And that's, was that it? Yep, yeah, we're full. Close that up. There we go. Much easier with a stock. And uh, let's actually pull, let's pull that back off momentarily. Take one more shot with it nice and loud. Boom. Sucker's got a lot of firepower behind it. It makes it easily the most powerful lever action in the collection. And I hope for those of you who've been hankering for this form factor in a sort of more modern context or just in uh, a peppier round, I hope you enjoy. Cool. Let's go ahead and jump over to the Meat Fortress scene now and talk about what has been added this week to that. So in terms of our new Meat Fortress options this week, we've got two primary new things and then a bunch of low-level systemic changes. The first is that you can choose to be on red or blue team based upon how you want to play. Um, this will affect what side of the map you spawn on as well as the coloration now of the Demo Man grenade and sticky bombs. We've now got though an even bigger change which is play area. You've all been playing in the full map, which can be fun, but it can also take a little while to get into, into a fight. And some people want a really high intensity, just respawn and I'm back at it. Super, super fast experience. For that, you can pick center and it's gonna restrict basically the spawning and the fighting to basically that, that center factory and the areas connecting into it, which even at six by six ends up being pretty intense. So let's jump in and try it. You can see we spawn up here. Some buddies. You know, mate, us professionals have standards. Oh. 
They are still bunching up a little bit too much indoors, which is something I'm working on. I do want them actually pathing out here on the roofs a little more. Wonderful. And then for those of you who are like, whoa, that's way too much, I, I prefer a much more relaxing Meat Fortress experience, you can always hit it over to something like Flank, which is perfectly set up for those of you who just want to hang in the backfield, plink away with the sniper rifle or one of the other long-range weapons. You should try to avoid the explosion. Good tip. There's another. Better watch out. In me head, I'm talking to you. This mode's perfect for that, or for just folks who want a slightly smaller pitch battle. Anywho, let's jump out of VR so that we can talk about the other things that have changed in this update. <laughs> they really are not that smart. Yo! So we've got a whole bunch more things to go over, which were easier just to talk about than try to set up a scene exactly in such a way to demonstrate some of the changes here. So let's jump right into them. Um, the entire map's pathing network for Meat Fortress has been rebuilt. Um, and what this basically means is that in addition to all of the sort of paths that connect things in a walkable way, there are now a whole bunch of drop-down paths and a few sort of lateral jumps that have been added. Um, so definitely watch above you now while playing Meat Fortress So because it's a lot easier to be surprised by a uh, by a bot jumping down from a higher location, and this is this is sort of part one of a two part process where I'm I'm basically teaching the SOSIG agents how to handle vertical differences a little bit better. I need to make them make especially th say the the demo man handle firing trajectories better for it. But even for movement, there's still some improvements that need to be done. Um, what's gone with this change actually and you'll notice this if you play in the breaching scene um, as well as the proving ground is that Sosix no longer just shoot up a ladder really really fast I, I got an override sort of s system in that allows me to configure separably the speed going up and down 
those links. They'll actually take the proper amount of time. They still climb fast, but it's, it's um, far slower than coming down uh, off of them. Uh, and that has affected a whole bunch, but that's, yeah, those three maps. So yeah, let's see, uh, Other Meat Fortress, the 18 by 50 millimeter pack of wallop cartridge has been given even more wallop uh, to be uh, more effective, especially for landing body shots on most of them to compensate for the fact that it's a one shot uh, at a time rifle. So I want to make that a little more satisfying without compromising the vision of it at, in, in this sort of adaptation. So it's got more punch now. Uh, as I mentioned, demo nades and sticky bombs are now colored correctly and they now detonate when they receive non-explosive damage so they won't set each other off but if you shoot them with a bullet um, or hit them with a uh, with a melee weapon they will explode uh, which actually makes the process of say firing demo nades towards a heavy that is currently firing at you a uh, an interesting experience Cool. Um, talked about the off mesh links for the bots. And then in terms of fixes, um, the SOSIG uh, demo nades actually hurt you now instead of just rocket jump you away. Um, the syringe guns mag can actually be picked up more than once. I fixed breaking <laughs> meat grinder completely with the last update. That was one of those terrifying... For those of you who don't code, there's a terrifying set of bug that... Um, that relate to little differences in the way that an application runs when it's in your editor, whether it's Unity or Unreal, or when it's built out. Um, subtle things like script execution order can be different. And so in this case, this bug was actually caused by something that runs perfectly fine in editor and then breaks in the build uh, without an error. So that took half of a day to track down, but fixed now. Um, I, uh, I fixed a few things relating to thrown object computation. Uh, basically, I wasn't normalizing that faux velocity fast enough. So if you teleported across a level or respawned, it could take up to a minute for that momentum from that teleport to bleed out. So I fixed that. I feel kind of stupid. Um, the G17, 18, 19, 22, and 17 custom trigger styles are all fixed. They no longer sort of actuate as though they're double action, um, which was incorrect. Um, fixed the incorrect scoring bullseyes in the warehouse range, um, and a couple other things involving object poses. And importantly, you can now separately disable jump in twin stick mode. There's a new added option for it in the options panel. And switching to left-handed mode no longer blocks the incorrect touchpads object input when you're doing twin stick on Vive or Rift. So that should help those of you who are switching it over into a left-handed configuration. Whew. Well, that is about it for this update. I hope you enjoy the new toys, and I hope I didn't like break five more things fixing these five things. It really it feels like that a lot lately. Um, in terms of updates and schedules, I'm probably not going to have an update, maybe not even a devlog next Friday as it's time for Anton to get some more dental work done as part of the slow process of fixing all this. Uh, so I probably won't want to be appearing oh, this sound like this um, and just will not want to appear on camera. So more than likely, I will see you folks two Fridays from now. Um, I think what I'm probably actually going to spend, aside from just taking a little bit of a break this coming week, um, is spend a bit of time on some back-end systems that aren't terribly exciting, that aren't really cool to update you folks with, um, but are necessary for dealing with the increasing size of this game's asset library, um, load times, and how all of that's managed in memory. So it's about time that I gave that another shot, uh, trying to improve a little bit. Anywho, I, uh, I hope you all enjoy, enjoy this, and I will uh, see you all in uh, one to two weeks. Peace.